This tutorial explains how to round numeric values using the round, the ceiling, the floor, the trunk and the signif functions in the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. So in the first part of this video, I want to show you the basic application of the different functions. And I also want to show you the difference of these rounding functions. So for that, we first need to create different values that we can round in the later applications of those functions. And we can create these example values, as you can see in lines two to five of the code. So if you run these lines of code, you can see at the top right of RStudio that four new data objects have been created, which are called x1, x2, x3, and x4. And the first value contains the number 1.1. The second value contains the number 1.9. The third data object contains the number minus 1.1 and the fourth data object contains the number minus 1.9. So if you want to apply the round, ceiling, floor, trunk and signif functions, we basically just need to apply these functions to the different names of our data objects. So for instance, the round function can be applied as you can see in lines seven to 10 of the code. So if you apply the round function to our first data object, which contains the value 1.1, the data object is rounded to the value one. If you apply it to the second data object 1.9, the value two is returned. If you apply to the third data object minus 1.1, the value minus one is returned. And if you apply to the fourth data object minus 1.9, the value minus two is returned. Similar to that, we can also apply the other functions. So as you can see, the basic application of these functions is quite straightforward. However, the important point of this first part of the tutorial is the comparison between these functions. And you can see that based on the graphic that you can see at the top right right now. So on the left side of this graphic, you can see the different functions. And on the right side of the graphic, you can see the four different values and you can see the result when we apply these functions to these values. In the first row of this table, you can see the results when we apply the round function to our four different values. And this is what I have just shown you in our studio. So as you can see, the results of the round function are one, two, minus one and minus two. So in comparison to that, we can also apply the ceiling function as you can see in lines 12 to 15 of the code. So if you run these lines of code, you can see at the bottom in the RStudio console that different values have been returned. And as you can see in the graphic, these values are sometimes higher compared to the round function because the ceiling function always rounds to the next highest value. So in case of the value 1.1, the ceiling function rounds to the value two. And in case of the input value minus 1.9, the ceiling function rounds to the next highest value minus one. If we apply the floor function to our data objects, you can see that again, different outputs are returned as you can also see in the graphic. And as you can see, the floor function always rounds to the next lowest number. So in this case, the first two input values are rounded to the value one and the second two input values are rounded to the value minus two. The truncate function also returns different results. So if you run these four lines of code, you can see that different results are returned at the bottom in the RStudio console. And as you can see, the truncate function rounds always to the digits on the left side of the decimal point. So in this case, the first two input values x1 and x2 are rounded to the value one, and the second two input values x3 and x4 are rounded to the value minus one. If we want to apply the signif function, we need to specify the digits that we want to use within the signif function. So in this case, we are setting the digits argument to be equal to one. So if you run these lines of code, you can see that the signif function returns exactly the same values as the round function. 
However, this is because we have specified the digits to be equal to one. And in the next example, I will show you a difference between the round function and the signif function. So let's move on to the next example. And this next example is based on the data object that we can create with line 32 of the code. So if you run this line of code, you can see that another data object is appearing at the top right of our studio, which is called X5. And as you can see, this data object contains a number with many digits on the right side of the decimal point. So if you want to apply the round function to this data object, we can use the round function as you can see in line 34. And in this case, I'm specifying in addition to the name of the data object, the number of digits that I want to use. So if you run line 34 of the code, you can see at the bottom that our data object is rounded to five digits on the right side of the decimal point. If we apply the signif function, as you can see in line 36 of the code, also with the digits argument set to the value five, then you can see at the bottom that different result is returned because this time we have cut off our data object at the fourth value after the decimal point. So in contrast to the round function, we have returned one number on the right side of the decimal point less. In the next example, I want to show you how to round to the nearest 10 value using the round function. And for that, we need to create another data object as you can see in line 38 of the code. So if you run line 38 of the code, you can see at the top right of our studio that a new data object is appearing, which is called X10. And this data object contains the value 77. So if we want to round to the nearest 10, then we can apply the round function as you can see in line 40 of the code. And in this line of code, I'm specifying the name of our data object and I'm specifying the digits argument to be equal to the value minus one. So if you run line 40 of the code, you can see that the round function has rounded our data object to the value 80. Another thing that you have to keep in mind when using the round function is that the round function always rounds up to the next even value. So if we apply the round function to the value 1.5, the value 2 is returned, as you can see at the bottom in the RStudio console. However, if we apply the round function to the value 2.5, the value 2 is returned again. So in case of 1.5, the value is rounded up and in case of 2.5, the value is rounded down. And the reason for that is that the round function always rounds to the next even value. So if you want to round to the next even or uneven value, no matter what the value is that we want to insert in the round function, then we need to specify our own user-defined function, as you can see in lines 46 to 53 of the code. So if you run these lines of code, you can see at the top right of our studio that a new function object is appearing, which is called round two. And we can now apply this function to the same values as we did before with the original round function. So as you can see in line 55 of the code, I'm applying the round two function to the value 1.5. And as in the application of the original round function, the value two is returned. However, if we apply the round two function to the value 2.5, the value three is returned in contrast to the original round function where the value two was returned. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage, I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching, see you in the next video.